Hey, and welcome back to Open for Views. Today I have another board game unboxing, and uh, it's one I didn't know about until maybe about a week ago. Uh, I was looking uh, up some video game companies and seeing what uh, video game uh, properties were licensed for board games, and this just so happened to be one. And it happens to be one I enjoy very much, so let's get into it. It's Devil May Cry, The Bloody Palace. Looks pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and read the back of this box. It's got a quote. That's nice. A powerful demon is about to resurrect, and we need your help, Dante. V, the mysterious one. Style counts for everything in this fast paced hack and slash board game for one to four players. That's, a hack and slash board game is not really something I ever thought I'd read. Take control of an iconic devil hunter Dante, Nero, Trish, or V. Where's Virgil? And build impressive attack combos as you face down waves of increasingly powerful monsters and demons. Compete to outscore other devil hunters and slay enemies with style to move up the ranks. Will you make it all the way up to the coveted smoking sexy style triple S rank? Based on the Bloody Palace game mode from the critically acclaimed Devil May Cry 5 video game, Devil May Cry F the Bloody Palace brings the uh, same high octane action and demon slaying style to your tabletop. Pretty cool. Alright. So let's go ahead and let me see who made this. Steam Forged? Steam Forged Games. Company I've never heard of. But I haven't heard of many of these board game companies. This is all new to me. Oh, okay. Pinky. Pinky is here. Sparkly Pink Pinky. Doing their job. And get this open. Yeah, Steam Forged. How have you been? All right. I hope so. I've been tried to do a let's play or like a tutorial overview video. Ooh, man, that's a lot harder than it looks. Got to give these people credit now for what they're doing. They're really busting their humps making these videos. All right, let's open this up. Sixty to ninety minutes. Almost there. There we go. Take a peek at that box art again. Let's move this back here. Ooh, very nice. It's the side of the van. What's this? Just okay, it's just a nice Devil May Cry the sheet. Put that in the box. We have a nice man, nice thick manual. Let's see how many pages this is. It feels thick, but it's just really nice paper stock. It's 27 pages, not too bad. Let's get the game board. It's a hexagon hexagon. Got some tokens, and we have something else in there. Let's see. We have the miniatures, which are next. I want to see what's in here because see, look, you got this, and then this. A mystery. I really want to know what it is. Have to find out. It's gonna drive me crazy. All right. Oh, I, uh, player card. Player card. Okay. There's four of them. Okay. I will show you one of them. What's the point of showing all four? It's the same thing, right? If only they were you know, customized per character. They are not. On your turn, 
You can run and make an any number of attacks. Run. Move a number of hexes up to your speed. At the end of the move, pick your facing. Attack. Play a card from your basic attack area or a card from your hand into your combo chain. Before or after attacking, you can discard one or more cards with a step icon from your hand to move additional hexes. Okay. All right, we'll check out these miniatures. Uh, we'll do the smaller ones, the characters, first. We have Pusa over here. We have v. Do I need... Yeah, I need Pinky. We have some tape to cut. Whoa, no, I cut the plastic. Whoops. This tape is like glue. I can't really complain about this. It's pretty nice. At least it's in there. Tape in four spots. So you definitely know if it's factory, if it's got four tape spots, right? Let's get this back over. Oh. Let's check out the uh, the posse. We have V. We have Nero. A little blurry there, Nero. The man himself, Dante. I held it over here. Maybe. Easier to see. Trish. I know. And I feel bad because I do not remember V's Panther, Cougar, or whatever that guy was. Played through Devil May Cry 5 once. Then we have a whole bunch of Impusa. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 in this one. I'll pull one out and show you. And then I'll show you the whole container full of... That was bound to happen. There's no bottom. And that's what the plastic's there for. Alright. So this guy goes right here. I'm going to keep the... Uh, I'm going to keep the mains out while I can. I have room. Okay. The bosses. I'll show those in a minute. We'll show these. Bosses. Put those over here. These are some cards to look at. Which is very nice. I need Pinky again. These cards. These cards are sealed. Excellent. Uh oh. One of them was opened. Well, it looks like there's only two on this one. And then we have the this other character, which I don't know their name, but they're pretty awesome. Let's do it over here. We fought this guy in front of like uh a bunch of mirrors or something in uh, Devil May Cry 5. Then we have this guy, this butcher dude. And I feel bad I'm not remembering their names, but I'm sure they're in the manual. And I will have my memory refreshed. I hope there's someone watching this video screaming the names of this character. That's... 
Okay, all the cards are in separate packs. That's very nice. All right. Wow, there's a bunch of different card packs. All right, here's the, the enemy names. So here, let's look at the bosses first. And then we can go through the uh, cards and then the manual. That sounds about right. Sounds like uh, my... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We have a little piece that came off of something already. Was that a little Impusa, guys? Probably one of the guys that fell out. Broken right now. It's in here. I'm hearing something slide around in here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something's broken in the bosses. Nothing a little glue can't fix. Oh, man. That's something a lot of glue. Oh, that's pretty gnarly. This guy's arm. This dude's arm. Look at that. Oh, that's freaking gnarly. It's in here. Thanks, guys. And then here's the other part. Yep, it's from him. Well, I gotta find this, this little thing that was in there too. So I gotta find where in the heck that goes. It's still a pretty sweet piece, but now I gotta fix it. That's great. All right. And then we have Sir Valiant. It's another boss. That was like in a corridor. You had to fight him. Chase you around this corridor. There's like buildings on the side. And I remember there was a there was like that spire in the background down this alleyway or something. And this is a um, I remember this guy. This is Riot. Riot left quite the impression on me. Really like this enemy design. Pretty sweet. And then we have the big boss. One of the big bosses. That is a nice miniature. Very nice. Very nice uh, mold. As always. All right, let's put these guys away. Broken. Broken out of the box. Shame on you. Shame on you for making finely detailed. A finely detailed sculpt. You should be ashamed. check out these cards. Let's check out the enemy cards first. And then I will be able to tell you who everybody is. Elder Gurion Knight. I don't remember that being the name of the character in the game, but it more than likely is. Just, uh, I guess I have a bad memory. Let's go ahead and open this up. We have Ampusa. I remember that. Ampusa. This enemy type activates as a group. Draw a single behavior card for all Ampusas, for all Ampusas on the game board. And then there's a red Ampusa. What? I guess they were different types in there, and I just completely looked over them. Red Ampusa. One has a big bottom. And this one said, this this enemy type activates as a group. I draw a single behavior card for all red and pusas. For all red and pusas on the game board. I'm going to have a hard time with that. For all. Hell Antonora. That's the, uh, the guy I said, uh, the butcher. Yes, I'm using the stats up here. A Hell Anta, yeah, Antonora cannot be stunned unless it has two or more stun tokens. Sounds like a pain in the butt. Scudo Angelo. Angelo. Scudo Angelo. 
Isn't Angelo one of the guys in Devil May Cry 4? He had to fight. He had like, you know, three or four different forms. Well, a Scudo Angelo has guard token. It reduces the damage it suffers from each attack from hunters in front of it by one to a minimum of one. Remove any guard tokens at the start of the enemy phase. Still annoyed about that broken miniature. Emp I see now, see? Empusa Queen. Look, it has one arm. That's hilarious. Isn't that funny? Look, it's just like the miniature. It has one arm. An Empusa Queen cannot be stunned. That's good to know. Yeah, there's a rest. See, I knew Riot. A Riot cannot be stunned unless it has three or more stun tokens. Riot's pretty cool. And then Proto Angela. That's the little one, I'm sure. Right. While a Proto Angelo has one or more guard tokens, it can not be stunned and it reduces the damage it suffers from each attack from the hunters in front of it by two to a minimum of one. Reduce any guard tokens at the start of the enemy phase, Proto Angelo. And then Elder Gurion Knight, Abyssal Calvary. The Elder Gurion Knight cannot be stunned. Reduce the damage the Elder Gurion Knight suffers from each attack from hunters by one to a minimum of one. Yeah, there was that boss. I think it's an expansion uh, for this game, but there was that boss in that game. It reminded me of... Uh, who's that dude from Ghouls and Ghosts? The one that had the mouth in his stomach and he could shoot fireballs out of it. May have been a boss... But yeah, there's a boss like that in Devil May Cry 5. Okay, so which one are we going to check out first? We have, uh... Oh, these are the enemy... I guess the enemy layout cards or whatever. There's the iPad again. Enemy layout cards. We have... Oh, these are like they're specifically their attack cards. These might be... The encounter, the stages, quote-unquote. And these are the enemy cards right here. That pretty sure that's how that operates. Ooh, I like this. It's got some aces. It'd be nice if the backs of these cards were all playing cards, you know, you could play cards with your uh, Devil May Cry cards. Achievements. This is weird to me. I'm going to open them, don't worry. And then we got a thick deck. And this is a thick deck too, but this one's the thicker deck. These are the moves. Ball rock strike. All right, which one to open first? Let's open up the uh, these stage encounter cards. I hope there's a storage solution for all of this stuff because there's quite a bit of it. Let's see here. Oh, I got some tape. Some tape is stuck to my fix to that. Their even their tape is sticky. Let's see here. I don't want to slice this too bad. There we go. Found the perfect spot. It's like when you get right under a cuticle of a nail. Right. There we go. I'm pretty sure these are the last because it's the huge. It's the octagon, octagon. Or the hexagon, hexagon, the octagon. Let us see. Boss. Let's see what these say. Boss. Level five. Haha. -ha. Five. Level. Okay, there's three level fives. Three level fours, one, two, three, four, four level threes. Keep it fresh, you know. Bury the enemy encounters. This boss, you just put boss right here because there's only one boss card in appears. Two, three, four. No, one, two, three. Three level twos, one, two, three. Three. 
that's interesting. There's more level threes than anything else. Four players, three players, two players, start one player. So there's a, okay. So you have two start one player cards. We're just going to go over these. I'll show you the start, you know, two, three, four player cards, but we're just going to check these out real quick. Okay, start one player. And it's showing you, for this one, it's going to be four red impuses on the battlefield. And you have that layout. Or you can do one uh, Hell Antinora and four impuses. See, it's just these different uh, stage layouts to keep it fresh, you know. And then we have a level one. We have another level one. Ooh, Scudo Angelo. Where is it? Scudo. Riot. Riot showing up in the first stage. It's like when you put it on that uh, Dante Must Die difficulty mode, you know. Late game enemies show up like really early in the game. That's always fun. Level two. Oh yeah, see. It's starting to get fun. As I said before, things are going to get crazy. Ha ha ha. I'm probably the 8 millionth person to say this. Level 3. 4. Four, two, five. And then, boss. Is that him? Just right in the middle? Yeah, just hanging out right in the middle, all big. Ready to destroy everybody. Let's see these start two players. Yeah, here we go. This is how you start two player. Start two player or the secondary two player stage. Start three players. Secondary. Er, whoop, secondary third player stage. And then four. Very nice. It's actually really cool. It's a good idea. It'd be nice to go and try the uh, you know four player stages at single player. Check out these achievement cards. You know, something else I liked about Devil May Cry 5 was the, uh, the music system. Like the higher score you got, the cooler the music got. The higher grade value you had. I'm trying to think of anything else did that. I don't know if Bayonetta did anything like that or not. Bayonetta is fun. Are these all achievement? Yes, they are. Savior. Two. Claim this if you slay an enemy that has another hunter. It's a front arc. Claim this if you slay an enemy. Oh, that's the same thing. Stylish fighter. Claim this if there are at least six cards in your combo chain. It's a combo, the combo thing. That's really... I just think about how... <laughs> How are they going to do this? Kill Stealer. Claim this if you slay an enemy during another player's turn using an interrupt card. Ooh. Kill Stealer. Defensive Fighter. Claim this if you dodged at least four damage from an enemy's attack. We all have point values. Let's see the really. Let's see this, the, the worse. Crack Shot. Claim this if you hit at least four different enemies with ranged attacks during your turn. Crowd Control Master. Claim this if you hit at least six different enemies with your melee attacks during your turn. Style Overlord. Claim this if there are at least ten cards in your combo chain. Well, that sounds like it might be neat. 
Ooh, and then there's these two really high value cards, five and ten. Five is Mighty Hunter. Claim this if you deal seven or more damage with a single attack. And then Demon Slayer. Claim this if you slay the boss. No, I did. I slayed the boss. Jump across the table, punch him in the face. Okay, now we have these. These two. This one. Well, this one is the, like, I guess the enemy action cards. What they do. Ah, I want to see these. Um, these are the attack cards for the characters. It shows their combos. Let's see. Very interested in this aspect of the game. Stinger. Stinger. It's like one of the first moves you learn in all the Devil May Cry games. Move up to four hexes before making this attack. Slide right in. That's nice. Rebellion Slam. You must claim your combo after playing this card. Of course, when you do double the style points, you score. Let's see if it shows the attack area. Okay, this might be pretty righteous. I'm trying to understand what these little... Oh, like this one's like, this one had a rainbow right here. This might be the chain, the combo chain. Rebellion strike, rebellion sweep, round trip, a volley, charge volley, charge blast. See, and they have you know they have different colors and stuff. See that one ends. That's got to be what it is. It has to. That's well, yeah, because the other cards were saying chaining together a combo. So they have a combo mechanic in a, in a card game. It's a character action card game. <laughs> Discard this card to dodge two damage from an attack made by an enemy and in your front arc. That enemy suffers two damage. Dante. Draw. Discard this card when Dante suffers any damage to ignore all damage suffered and move two hexes. Strategize. Discard this card during your turn to go through your deck or discard pile and add a single card to your hand. If you look through your deck, shuffle it. Uh, you can, so you can, you know... No, I didn't look through it. Oh, here's the... Uh, the, Dante, the backs of the Dante cards. Okay, let's get to... Okay, Nero. These are all Nero's moves. Trish... She wasn't playing Blum Blum Let Me Cry 5, was she? And the update, like the special edition, you know, where... There's a V. A V. There we go. Okay, all right. Check these out. What? Okay, there are these, these cards. Oh, very interesting. Trickster style. Dante. Place this card face down next to your hunter board as soon as it is purchased. When you discard any number of cards to step, add one to the total number of hexes you can move. Trickster card. Gunslinger. Place this card face down next to your hunter board as soon as you as it is purchased. Once per turn, discard a card from your hand to return the ranged attack card from your combo to change your hand. And then Swordmaster. Place this card face down next to your hunter board as soon as it is purchased. Once per turn, discard a card from your hand to return a melee action from your combo to your hand. Swordmaster. Cool. That's neat. Okay. Let's check out the... Gambit. Move V up to eight hexes, then V makes this attack. If an enemy... Will not be slain by this attack. It suffers no damage. That's got to be what those chains are. That's where you chain in the combos together. And I guess you match color to color. That's the only thing that makes sense. Round Robin. Each enemy suffers... Or each enemy within three hexes of these suffers two damage. In addition, sh Shadow. Or is that the bird? I think Shadow is the... I'm pretty sure Shadow is the panther. Let's see if I can read through here and it tells me. Take damage from Shadow. Yeah, it seems like Shadow is, the, is a separate character and that's the Panther.
That was neat. I don't think he got enough love. His character was very interesting. I hope they implement his type of character, like a summoner class, into uh, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, when, when and if it ever comes out. Let's see here. Ah, uh, and here's Nero's cards. He has uh, style cards as well. Uh, Punchline, Gerbera, Gerbera, and Ragtime. And it's the Expended Devil Trigger cards. Move up the Punchline is move up the four hexes passing through occupied hexes. When you return this card to your basic attacks area, flip it face down. Gerbera, Gerbera. When, you're, uh, when you return this card to your basic attack area, flip it face down and ragtime. Oh, those are the, the different hands that you could use where they... Ah, yeah, that's right. Trish. Trish cards. Oh, and I didn't shout out. Did I show you the Nero cards? I can't remember. The backs of them. And then Trish cards are all... Yeah, they're just her. Handspring, move up three hexes after making an attack. Discard this card during your turn to remove three damage from Trish. Cool, man. All right. And there's this one. Actually, wait, that's the that's the penultimate th thick deck. i got to wait a minute on that one. Check out the enemy cards, the enemy actions. See what kind of garbage. Hey, stop it. Static cling. I don't like that. Let's see here. Okay, so it's the other sides. Uh, those are nice looking cards. Okay, let's see, he has his own. Elder Gurion Knight has his own, like, hand. Oh! Wicked! Lance Strike. Hunters adjacent to Elder Gurion Knight are knocked back three hexes. Move the Elder Gurion Knight five hexes toward the nearest hunter, then it makes this attack. Yeah, that sounds fun. Oh, wow, look at this one. Lance Sweep. Move the Elder Gurion Knight six hexes towards the nearest hunter. End the Elder Gurion Knight's movement with as many hunters as possible in the front arc. Then it makes this attack. That sounds like fun. It's just a... So we got Proto Angelo cards. This is a super high quality. These are some nice cards. Cleave. If Proto Angelo is adjacent to a hunter, it turns to face them and makes this attack. If the Proto Angelo is not adjacent to a hunter, it moves four hexes towards the nearest hunter. It's got a lot of cleave. Grand swing. Move the Proto Angelo two hexes towards the nearest hunter. Then it makes this attack. Place a guard token next to Proto Angelo. Riot. It's the same artwork that was on the cards, but it's just kind of nice to see their attacks specifically. Move right six hexes towards the nearest hunter. Then it makes this attack. This looks like it's going to be righteous. Looks like they really took into account, you know, um, crowd control and spacing and, and combos. It's nuts. With the Antusa Queen, with all of her, her oh, all of her cards. Move the Impusa Queen five hexes towards the nearest hunter, passing through occupied hexes and ending its move with as many hunters as possible in its front arc. Then each hunter in the Impusa Queen's arc suffers three damage and is knocked back one hex. It's a trample move. We got Scudo. Is Scudo? Probably wrong. Angelo. I love the colors. Very nice. I think, all, I think they're all different. See, this one is blue and yellow. This next one, the Hell Antonora, is green and yellow. Let me check. Yeah. And Pusa Queen is purple and red. Hmm. Very nice. What is what does uh, Scud the Disposable Angelo do? 
move the Scudo Angelo five hexes towards the nearest hunter when it makes this attack, shuffle the deck after returning this card to the bottom. Leaping Slice. Shield Strike. Move towards Scudo Angelo three hexes. Move the Scudo Angelo three hexes towards the nearest hunter, then it makes this attack. Place a guard deck next to Scudo Angelo. Then Hell Antonora. Same thing there. A nice hand of cards. Frenzied Swings. Move the Hell Antonora two hexes towards its nearest hunter, then it makes this attack. That's going to be fun. Let's read another one. Hack and Slash. Move the Hell Antonora two hexes towards the nearest hunter, then it makes this attack. Just flip it all around, be it a jerk. Red Impusa has four cards, and so does Impusa. All right, four? Yeah, it's four. Similar. Swarm. Move each Red Impusa three hexes towards the nearest hunter, then it makes this attack. Then Claw Swipe. Each Red Impusa that is adjacent to a hunter turns to face them and makes this attack. Move each other red and pusa two hexes toward the nearest hunter so it's play that and everybody else gets to move and we have good old regular impusa move each impusa three hexes towards the nearest hunter then each impusa makes this attack one damage what a scrub claw swipe each Impusa that is adjacent to a hunter turns them to face them and makes this attack. Move each Impusa two hexes towards the nearest hunter. I get it. All right. We went through, oh, we almost went through all of the cards. And then we have this one. Whatever this is. Is it more, is it more attack cards? There are so many. If that's what it is then I think we're just going to have to go through the manual. It is. It's even more moves for Dante. We have more Dante cards. Well, you know what? Let me get all of them together so I can show you guys just how much. Yeah, here we go. Here's Dante. Where's my Dante stack? Right here. We have our Nero. Ah, oh, they smell nice. Mmm. Ink. It's like when you get a new book. It smells really good. Nero. I mean, everyone gets their own legit deck of cards. See, now they got me it. You know, guys, I haven't even played the game. And at Steamforged, I'm really interested in buying your expansion packs. Thanks a lot. Quality is just too nice. And this is Trish. Trish deck. And then the rest of these are V. We got the V deck. Then we have these little guys right here. Yeah. We have a Nero title card. And I guess that shows his basic attack. Dante. Trish. And V. All right. Manual time. Very nice. Nice and colorful. Am I the only one who finds it mildly embarrassing that all these other companies and stuff are doing full, beautiful full-color manuals, but video games are not? Overview. Devil May Cry The Bloody Palace sees one to four players taking control of a powerful devil hunter and dispatching wave after wave of increasingly powerful enemies. Defeat these enemies 
and the hunters can claim valuable orbs they can later spend to purchase new attacks and abilities for the next stage. I guess that's some of those tokens where were the orbs. That's cool. However, slaying demons isn't enough to win. Style counts for everything. Players score style points by building impressive attack combos and claiming achievement cards. The player with the most style points at the end of the final stage is the winner. For a single player game, the aim is to get to the end of the final stage with as many style points as possible. Each Devil Hunter has their own deck of cards, we know that, representing the different attack moves they can use. We also know that as well. Every Hunter's deck is unique. We're ahead of the game here, guys. Players take turns moving their Devil Hunters and having them fight demons, but we really didn't know that. A player might play cards to have their hunter slash with their sword, shoot with their pistol, and so on. These cards can be linked together into a combo chain, allowing players to create devastatingly stylish flurries of attacks. But beware, being hit by an enemy attack removes a chain entirely and forces the hunter to start over again. X. Okay. I don't know if someone at Capcom consulted with this game, but... So far, so good. I just, I hope, I hope it transfers well. Setting up. Place the game board in the middle of the playing area where the players can all reach it. Each player chooses a hunter board and puts it in front of them, making sure they leave some space to the right for the cards they'll play during their turn. Hunters. Each player chooses an available hunter and gathers. Everybody will want to play as Dante, right? If it had Virgil, everyone would want to, would want to play as Virgil chooses an available hunter and gathers their corresponding hunter model style marker and their 48 cards. Set up each model in one of the blue hexes in the center of the game board. This can be done in any order the players choose. Place the style markers on the track running around the edge of the game board on the square displaying zero. Randomly determine a first player, roll a dice, and give them the first player token. Each player then sets up their hunter board uh, as shown to the left following these steps. Place the hunter card in the space at the top. It shows you right here. I'm not going to go through that. The Bloody Palace deck. Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. Start one player, level 1 and level 2. Oh, in level 4 and level 5. I was thinking you go level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I end. But it's actually level 4, level 5 are for 4 players. So, you know, for uh, uh, more difficult encounters, I, I wonder, I wonder if you can get good enough at the game, you know, learn the ins and outs of the combo system, that could be pretty righteous, you can go into the higher difficulty modes and just do it by yourself. Begin! The player with the first player token flips over the top card of the Bloody Palace decks and sets it up as follows. Gameplay basics. Starting area. The seven hexes in the center of the game board are where the hunters begin the game. So you have to, you're forced to start in a certain area. I mean, it, it's, it's the beginning of the stage, right? You have to traverse. There are two reference marks outside of the edge of the hex grid. These are used to properly align the Bloody Palace card at the start of each stage and ensure that enemies are placed correctly. Style track. Unranked. Dismal. Crazy. Badass. Apocalyptic, savage, sick skills, smoke sexy style. Whenever a hunter is knocked out, their score drops to the first space of the previous style rank. Okay. If their score is currently within the unranked section, they drop to zero. Style points. Around the edge of the game board is the style track for keeping track of the player's style points. Each player starts with a style marker on the zero space. Players can score style points in the following two ways. Moving your marker one space along the track for each style point scored. Two ways to score. Claim combo chains during your turn, scoring style points based on the number of cards in the chain. And claim achievement cards by fulfilling the... Uh, that's what the points were. By fulfilling criteria listed on the card. You can claim one of these cards each round, but you do not score the points for them until the end of the final stage. Okay. Hitbox, character models, moving. Ah. Stage. 
snuck a little promotion in there. Very nice. Large and gigantic models. These are the big bosses and stuff. Orbs. When you collect a green orb, it is immediately returned to the supply of tokens. If your hunter has any damage, you can remove up to three damage. If they don't, there are no further effects. Red orbs. Any red orbs you collect are placed on your hunter card. At the end of each stage, when all enemies on the game board have been slain, you'll have the chance to spend any red orbs you have collected. See page 22. I'm actually interested in that. First player token will change hands. I guess that's one of the... On the, I imagine the token card that I didn't, you know, look through too much. Round sequence. Running. Attacking. Stepping. Melee attacks. Deal damage with ranged. Stun targets. Knockback. Follow attacks. Enemy phase. Behavior. Okay, behavior decks. Damaging hunters, dodging, knock them out. End phase. Draw cards. This is the, during the end. Okay, end of stage sequence. Pass first player token. Uh, the first player token is passed to the player to the left of the player who slew the last enemy. Purchase upgrades. Each player can look through their upgrade deck and spend their red orbs to purchase cards. That's okay. That's what the rest of that deck is. The number of orbs you spend to purchase on the upgrade card is shown on the cost icon on the bottom right of the card. Let's see. It's bottom right. Right there. Cost two reds to get that move. Then add the upgrade card to your discard pile, unless the card instructs you to place it in your next hunter, next to your hunter board. For example, the Get More Orbs card, which each hunter has in their upgrade deck. Shuffle your discard pile back into the deck. Start the next stage. Okay, so the end phase. Draw cards. Each player can choose to discard any number of cards from their hand. Then each player who has fewer than five cards in their hand draws cards from their deck until they have five in their hand. If your deck runs out, shuffle your discard pile to create a new deck. Two, special effects. Any other game uh, game effects that happen in the end phase are resolved now. If there are more than one effect, if there is more than one effect, the first player chooses the order they are resolved in. Pass first player token. The first player passes the first player token to the player to the left. This ends the current round and signals the start of the next. High score, high score. Huh. Interesting. I still don't understand the uh in a nice a nice little index right at the end. Oh and there we go. Nice little overview of combo chains. All the iconography, very cool. I'm still very perplexed by just the piece of paper, the devil may cry neon sign on the side of the van. I guess it's, you can frame it and put it on your wall while you play the game. I guess that's what that's supposed to be. But, you know, now I have a Dante miniature. Oh, it's really big right now. And I have a Nero miniature. It's pretty big right now, though. I have a V miniature. Oh, I keep on getting them off screen. I have a Trish miniature. And then I have a shadow miniature, which is this might be my favorite one. I thought that was really cool. I thought shadow was cool. I wish I could remember the name of the crow. But as always with this kind of stuff, it's eluding me right now. Can't remember the names of the games and stuff that I start talking about when I start to rant. But yeah, it's just the way it goes. But yeah, that seems like it'll be a righteous game. I'm a little bummed about that boss uh, about the uh, Impusa Queen, but nothing a little glue won't fix. A little super glue. It'll be nice and e a nice and easy fix. But yeah, looks cool. Looking forward to play it. But as always, at the beginning of the video, we were open. But now we're closed. Beat it!